Okay. Can you hear me back there in back rows? Cool. Uh, so I'm going to talk uh, a bit about machine learning and its application to naive application to software development process. And by the way, how many of you are developers? Raise your hand, please. <laughs> cool. So uh, also I will present some evidence that you are hiding something. OK. As you know, we at 42 Coffee Cups are a completely distributed software company. We don't uh, keep a central office, so we collect hard facts about how software gets done. We call it, well, not that many, but really hell a lot of them. And of course, we are interested in learning how to turn those facts into some profit, perhaps to upgrade our uh, PyCon sponsorship level next year. Uh, yet a task uh, of relating uh, something like Luke was here at, at 6 a.m. or that Darth Vader broke a build at uh, 9 p.m. or even uh, some wise comments that uh, Yoda put in your code are not that easy task. So we are here in in famous dirty pants problem in turning some facts into profit. So let's reduce this uh, to a kind of toy problem, and uh, let's try to solve something smaller. Just let's get a ticket with uh, everything we know about it, and uh, let's predict how long it will take to close that ticket. And have a bonus. Let's learn some scikit learn in the process. How many of you have used um, task tracking system in your project? <laughs> Track track on uh, Django project, Django project, uh, code djangoproject.com. Cool. Uh, you will be in familiar waters. Uh, okay, let's start with um, getting our tools ready. Uh, Scikit-learn installation is really straightforward, at least until you are under Linux. Um, for those uh, MacOS users, let the same Steve be with you and uh, Bill get slave. Uh, well, just go download Ubuntu. Um, basically, we would install Python development headers, NumPy, which is great, uh, number crushing library, SciPy, which is another great toolkit for uh, more scientific processing. Um, What's there? Familiar setup tools, uh, Atlas for fast linear um, algebra and G++ compiler. And now we are ready to install scikit-learn. Don't do this at home, use the virtual env instead. Given our tools are ready, we are going to scrap uh, to get some raw data. Uh, downloading a list of closed tickets from um, uh, Django track is uh, really straightforward. Just go uh, grab the content of uh, that URL in the comma separated value file and save it. You will get something like this. Unfortunately, this file doesn't contain some important data, as you might notice. It doesn't have uh, a date when the ticket was closed and it doesn't have a ticket description. So we have to resort to dark side of beautiful soap scraping. Okay, it's um, really quite simple with some black magic. Go download the content of the ticket page, uh, grab a closing date of ticket, out of there with uh, some black magic um, uh, with handling the time zones, get ticket description, and we are ready. 
just save it to the same uh, similar CSV file. Okay, any questions so far? Cool. The next step would be to decide how we would judge if our model is good enough. Um, to do this, we will uh, use uh, scikit-learn cross-validation model to split our data set into two pieces. The training set, which would um, contain 80% of our data and testing set, which would contain 20% of our data. Then we will run our model and compute mean squared error, which is um, pretty straightforward, familiar uh, measure how well we uh, got with our model. Any questions? Cool. Okay, let's have some fun. Uh, let's start with a really stupid model. Can we uh, predict the ticket closing date using just ticket ID, ticket number? It appears it's really uh, simple. Let's... Um, we will walk um, on our CSV file, get some uh, data into our array, which will contain right now just a ticket ID. And of course, uh, let's get uh, the time it took to close the ticket. Obvious, yeah? One of important step is to <clears throat> scale and um, rebase our data so it would it standard deviation would be one and mean mean would be at zero. Uh, remember to do the step otherwise your learning al algorithm would um, would not converge or would produce really stupid results. See um, we uh, do this with preprocessing model. It's scalar. We fit our scalar with uh, data we have and transform. That fit and transform idea would be um, is really useful idiom in scilearn. Uh, Scikit learn. Okay, next step, learn. As simple as this. We use uh, here support vector machines, regression, uh, to build our model. SVM, short for uh, support vector machines, is robust and widely used method in um, machine learning. Support method basically means that you, it, it doesn't care about data points that are um, far away from, um, f f from the margin, but um, it, it, it does care only about those data points that are really important for your result. And um, this is also very good for uh, scalability. Regression, regressor means that it won't classify our tickets into kind of uh, black white or, or spam ham, but instead it, it would produce a real valued result, time it would take to, to close the ticket. And final step, compute uh, an error of our model on both Training set and test set. Okay, let's uh, run our model. Not funny, yeah? Your boss won't like uh, if you would uh, tell him that this ticket would take uh, 
uh, to, to close uh, a month plus uh, given or taken a year. <laughs> but well, uh, w what we could expect from uh, uh, such a really dump model, right? Let's see if you can improve. Um, let's start with finding a be a better parameters. Uh, support vector machine has a couple of parameters. One of them is C. It controls regularization. Ba uh, basically, that means that a larger value of C would lead to a closer fit to the training data, but we um, tremendously risk of overfitting, uh, producing good results only on our training data, but fail on a test set. We can do this uh, in a simple way, just loop over um, different values of uh, this parameter with following results. Not much improvement, but at least we get something. But um, uh, scikit-learn gives us a better way to do this using grid search. Uh, we instituted our um, grid search uh, instance, give it a, a, parameter, a parameter space to run over, let it run in parallel uh, on any number of nodes it could find, and well, we get the same result, but it, uh, at least we get it much faster. Uh, beware, don't do this on your notebook or uh, you are risking burning your knees. It gets really hot. Okay, uh, let's um, try more to add in more features. What if we would uh, take care about the day ticket was created? The change is, again, very uh, simple. We just add another value, another column in our data row. Oops. We got some improvement, but it's um, tiny. Okay, uh, perhaps more features would help. Well, the rest of data is text, it's not numbers. What we can do about this? Uh, good scikit-learn uh, provides us uh, easy to use and robust to, uh, tools to do this job. Let's just count a number of uh, times it, uh, the specific word or sequence of words uh, appears in our text and transform it into a real number, uh, computing um, times frequency um, term frequency times inverse document frequency. Just like this. Yeah. Let's collect, let's collect strings um, on who, wo who did report uh, that ticket and transform that list of strings into a matrix. Note that this matrix is sparse. That means that uh, most of uh, its values are zeros. Uh, thus, we would resort uh, to SciPy sparse model and just stack our data. Important, again, remember to rescale so our mm, <coughs> standard deviation would be still at one. We won't change mean of our data this time because we would lose sparsity and our matrix would get really huge and it won't fit your memory. What next? Okay. Okay. Let's try. Are we on the right track? You got some improvement, right? Let's try with ticket subject. Just the same as described earlier. Collect our subjects, transform them, 
knows that we are um, collecting not just single words, but uh, digrams and trigrams. Occurrences of um, two words and three words. And uh, transform it back to our data matrix. Okay. Bingo. We have managed to predict uh, the closing date uh, with less than month's precision. Good? Not well. <laughs> uh, we, it, it, it performs really uh, better on the test data, but still fails on the training. Uh, that means that uh, it won't be really useful on your project or on the Django project. Okay, what else, else we can fiddle with? Perhaps uh, we, we, we can try using different SVM kernel. Basically, different kernels uh, fit for different things. So far we have used RBF kernel which uh, feeds, which is focused on um, distance from training examples which is non-linear. Uh, it's known that uh, for sparse tasks, like te text classification tasks, um, linear kernel, which performs just uh, linear regression, could perform better. Also, we would, uh, le let's check a um, different range of regularization parameter values. Oops, still not good. But at least we don't overfit, we, we, we don't um, raise our uh, regularization parameter that big, you see. Well, let's try adding more features. Django tickets have component in them. Again, the same pipeline collects uh, collect components names, transforms them to our data matrix, and runs the model. Again, just a marginally better results. What would happen if we add something that would that supposedly contains everything the developer has to know about the ticket, the ticket description. Again, a familiar uh, changes in your code. Collect descriptions, transform them to data matrix, and again, just marginally better values. So, what we have achieved so far? We have built a simple machine learning algorithm, walk it through all steps, we have learned scikit-learn, which is a really good tool for such quick and dirty tasks. And we found something really important. Even with all the data explicitly available in the ticket, all those data is not enough to predict a closing date. So the most important data that affects how long it would take to complete a ticket is out of our tracking systems. Developers, again, raise your hands, please. Uh, less of you. <laughs> Guys, what are you hiding? <laughs> okay. So our code would be available uh, after this talk at uh, GitHub. You can contact me on Twitter, on my company side. Um, if you 
just a plug. If you uh, want, if you are a developer and want to work in our company, you are welcome. Especially if you are a junior developer. If you would uh, like to talk about machine learning or perhaps to contact us, <laughs> or just to get your stuff done, you know the address. And uh, bonus for those who is still not sleeping. If you will, will mention uh, your PyCon code, you will get 10% discount if your project starts before the end of the year. Questions? Did you ever try to estimate an exact fix based on the uh, source code repository? That's the next step. <laughs> uh, uh, really, this uh, um, um, running this model takes uh, quite a lot of time, even on uh, one of our development servers that is, I, I guess, eight core. Uh, especially if you try to do a deep, a really deep search in parameters. Uh, my next best guess is that um, if you would add to the data mix uh, keywords from the source code, uh, like class names or variable names or function names, something like that, it would, uh, I guess, it would really improve the prediction date. Internally, uh, when run on our company data, internal, we are able to predict uh, the ticket um, closing time in billable hours, up to five hours. So it um, really depends on the process that you run in your team and the data that is available to you. Did I answer your question? Um, I want to ask this question. What are the insights that you had uh, after playing with all this, which refer to, which relate to 42 coffee cups about your tracking system and what you are going to put into it and uh, how you're going to manage it to actually being able to predict it. Okay, I, uh, I will repeat. The main insight, developers are hiding something. But have you asked them, have you asked them to put more information? It doesn't help, really. Uh, even um, uh, the Django core development team is really good and it uh, pays a lot of attention uh, to ticket description and uh, ba basically what, what happens in the, uh, their tracking system. Uh, yet the data is, uh, that's explicitly available in the track is not... Um, we have an estimate. Um, internally, uh, it works well, but it uh, really should be improved. Uh, the major point is that uh, um, the closing time depends not much on what's in your ticket, but on uh, your team and the process the team executes. Okay? It's a very interesting analysis, first of all, and it's a very interesting problem. Uh, my question is uh, around your conclusion. So you concluded that you don't have enough features, signal the features to explain signal in the data. Uh, my question is that, or my observation rather, is that it's very rare that uh, a single model explains a complex phenomenon. So uh, a couple of things here is that uh, support vector machines do not take the geometry of the data into account. Uh, uh, support vector machines не смотрят на геометрию данных, на топологию данных. And so um, 
of course, you cannot try, you know, the support vector machine with 10 Cs and then 100 Cs as the regularization parameters. But I thought one thing that might be helpful is to use some sort of an ensemble method where you fit several support vector machines with different bases. Mm -hmm. Uh, another thing you could have tried is to do some data visualization and see if there are pieces of data that could be separately explained by different models. Another thing is uh, just do some sort of residual analysis where you fit something like a random forest mm -hmm. because support vector machine doesn't explicitly model interactions even when you have uh, like radial basis functions that multiply yep. different features. Yes. Uh, but still, I mean, there could be some weird interaction in your features and if you have a lot of features, there could be a lot of interactions. So just uh, wondering if you'll consider doing this and if so, what were your <laughs> further insights? Basically, you have described my future research plan on that. <laughs> Uh, I haven't presented, uh, I have presented just basic, uh, basic results because this, this is not a machine learning conference and, uh, well, running random forests uh, and uh, boost forest uh, takes a really long time even on uh, high-end servers. I have to work a lot to parallelize this code and uh, try to rent uh, servers cheaply on Amazon. What was the size of your data? Um, that, uh, this data se set uh, had uh, 19,000 tickets and it produced something like 200,000 features, I guess, in and total. How many observations? 19,000, you said? 19,000. Thank you. Um, I think that Django project is... Uh, a little bit non-trivial project, so um, how do you think will the results for prediction will be different for more uh, real-world business usages in real-world projects, I mean, like, uh, well, blocks, uh, I don't know, something <laughs> like that. Uh, uh, I have already mentioned that uh, this started from uh, my internal attempts to um, improve our internal processes. So far, uh, with the rough scripts uh, I have, I can predict um, a ticket billable time, given or taken uh, um, three to five hours um, under different models. So uh, for our internal work, it wo works, it produces useful results. Uh, not uh, yet enough, I can, uh, can point with um, and play a lot and uh, improve a lot of my business, but um, still useful. Okay. Um, my question is, why not to add more information like developer, because different people perform differently, uh, complexity of the ticket, I think it's the main part how long it takes to close it, and maybe amount of comments. Because if developer comments a lot, maybe he have problems and it will take more time. Uh, yes, but um, I, I, uh, I will start answering from the last part of your question. Uh, when developer started working on the ticket and started commenting it, uh, the clock is already ticking. Uh, uh, my original intent was to estimate how long it would um, take clock time and billable time uh, to close the task even before we have started the project. So okay? ju just according to ticket description and like some keywords. Yes, yes, exactly. And uh, about the first um, part of your question. Um, I still can't prove this with numbers, but I uh, have a great feeling that um, uh, when developer would know that such kind of script is running over his uh, comments and predictions, uh, we would have um, Heisenberg uncertainty. Uh, developers would comment and uh, give their prediction to fit uh, what they consider uh, to be the right time. 
and uh, basically the value that we are interested to find would change under the observation.